everyone. I am going to be dyeing some t-shirts today. There are a couple of outfits that I really like but can't seem to quite match or coordinate the color. So what I do is I make my own colors and uh, this is how I do it. So we are using today from Jacquard Procyon dye and today I'm using two colors to make a terracotta color. So what we do is we take a utility sink, which is what I have in my art studio, and I fill it up with quite warm water. And for this to work, I'm going to mix one and a half cups of coarse salt or kosher salt in with the water and the dye. And I make sure that that's really uh, nicely diluted and um, before I put my fabric in. So here we go. So that was one cup. And I'm gonna just do another half for this color. And it varies on different um, colors. If you want lighter colors, they have different um, ratios of salt and soda ash later for it. So that goes in. And the colors is today we're gonna use Today we're gonna to use rust orange, and we're asking for, they're saying three and a half teaspoons of rust orange. So I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball it here. I've got one, two, three, and a half. And the other color that they're asking for is burgundy, and that's one and an eighth of a teaspoon. So, I've got one and a bit. So once it's all stirred together and is in, um, filled up with the, with the water, then I'll show you again as to what the color is coming out with. Looking really interesting already. Okay, so I have all the salt melted in my sink and I've got my two colors, my rust orange and my burgundy to create a terracotta color. And this is sort of the color it's coming out as, which is quite nice. And in goes my white shirt. So here we go. And this stays in for 10 to 15 minutes and you just want to agitate it and move it around. Sometimes the pigments um, will separate and you want to make sure that they're really fully distributed around the sink and into your fabric. So this is what it's coming out already. I quite like that. Quite nice. Nice um, terracotta color. So there are differing ratios for how dark you want your, or how light you want your fabric. Um, and Jacquard is really good for figuring out um, amounts and the colors you want. So they've got a wide range of colors, but if there's something that you can't see that you want to make, they've actually made up um, quite a few recipes for different colors. So. This one, like I say, they don't have an actual terracotta color, so I'm making one um, that they suggest using two different colors. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. As you can see, I'm using gloves because it is dye and you don't want your hands to become all that same color. So this color is turning out quite nicely and that's gonna be a nice terracotta color when this is done. If you want something brighter or lighter, again, you can change the ratio of the dye and the salt as well. And this is put in warm water. So I'm gonna let this go for another little while and I'll come back and check in on it. Okay, we're back after 15 minutes. So this is what the cloth is looking like now. Once you squeeze it out, this is what you're getting. 
kind of a nice dark terracotta color, really quite pretty. It's going to change once we add the, um, uh, the soda ash. It's going to change color, which is really quite interesting. So I am using a quarter cup of soda ash into some hot water or water, and just enough to sort of mix it up a bit. And there is a chemical reaction that actually turns this quite hot um, once you start mixing it. And uh, at some point, I won't be able to hold on to the onto the cup because it gets so hot with this um, chemical reaction. But I'm just sort of breaking it up, loosening it up a bit before I put it in the water. There we go, that's a little better. It's getting extremely hot. So I'm gonna take this out, squeeze it out, just so that there's not so much moisture in there. And it's not going all over the place. So then I'm gonna add the soda ash, ash mixture and make sure that that gets all incorporated in the water and the dye solution. Make sure that there's any clumps of soda ash still. You're making sure that it's all getting in there. And you can definitely tell if it's um, uh, dissolved or not because you can feel the grains uh, on the bottom of the sink. Once you start moving it around, it's gonna feel like sand, but that should dissipate. Um, once it's all integrated into the water. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Feels pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna add this back in and this is when, the, over time, the color is gonna change. It's, I can't remember whether it's gonna be lighter or darker. I think it goes a little bit darker. I just recently did an avocado color with a mixture of rust orange and turquoise. And on the white shirt that I did, it was almost sort of a seafoam green. And then when I added the soda ash mixture, it turned into a nice avocado green. So as you can see, now it's starting to kind of go on the brownier side of the terracotta. Ooh, that looks nice. So this gets agitated and stays in the water for 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the intensity of color that you want. Um, sometimes they go a little less than 30 minutes, just depending on what I'm happy with. And of course, dye is gonna change once it's dry. So I kind of do a little squeeze test, put it out, and it's gonna go a little bit lighter once it dries. I'm pretty happy with that color, but we're gonna let that sit and set and again, you're gonna agitate it every once in a while. I like to use an old paint stick, uh, a clean paint stick. Um, I want to do other things while I'm doing this. It doesn't have to be constant. So you can just come back every five, 10 minutes and move it around. And uh, we'll do the 30 minutes. Okay, we're back after 30 minutes and I am happy with the color. Again, look how dark it's turned from an orange to a nice, lovely, rich terracotta color. So what I'm doing is just squeezing out some of the water. I am releasing the stopper from the sink with a good rinse. And now we can start rinsing. Now we can start rinsing with, you start with cool water. Rinsing your fabric, and the cold water tends to set the color a little bit as well. So I'm just going to give it some good rinses and squeezes. And we are gradually going to start to go from cool to warm water as we keep rinsing. Just really make sure you get all your areas. So 
still getting warmer. And you're going to start to see less dye coming out of the rinse, which is good. And a little bit warmer. Feel about medium. warm and you give it a good rinse again and the water is almost clear then you can fill up your sink again a bit with some citropol from Jacquard which is a very nice mild soap um, or if you've got uh, eucalyptus or anything like that um, for knitwear it's quite nice so I forgot to mention that um, all of this is done on natural fibers. Um, Procyon dye is for natural fibers. So linen, any cellular fibers, um, linen, cotton, bamboo, rayon um, will work very nicely with this. So. Again, we're going to sit this for about five minutes in the uh, soap bath. And yeah, that's going to be a nice color. It's going to be a really nice color. All right, so we'll let it sit for five minutes and then we'll give it another good rinse and wring it out and let it dry. Okay, I've waited five minutes, and then I uh, filled all the water from the sink, took the stopper out, and now I'm just rinsing thoroughly again. You want to rinse it about two or three times in warm water until there is practically no dye left when you squeeze it out and you watch it. That's a pretty color. So when you're doing um, cotton t-shirts, for example, you notice the stitching, the stitching stays white. I don't know if you can see that, but because it is polyester and Procyon will not dye polyester. So if you've got a polyester blend of a shirt, I did a hoodie that had a polyester blend and it dyed it um, quite nicely, but it almost had a heathered look because of the polyester within the fibers themselves of the fabric, um, which is kind of neat. Um, but so that's why your stitching is still going to show up as white, but you know, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not fussed by that. All right. so. Once we're happy with our rinse, we can go ahead and give it a good ring out and a good squeeze. You're still going to see a little bit of color coming out, but that's okay. It's very minimal. So, here we go. Here's the shirt, wet, which is really quite nice. And now what I like to do, let's see if I can move this over now, is I'm going to show you how I bring out my shirts. I just want to make sure that this is right. Down we go. There we go. All right. So I take a big uh, towel and fold it in half. And then again, I've got my fabric here and I just roll it up like a burrito 
and then all I do is step on it to squeeze out most of the moisture. This is a great way to uh, wash your knitted um, garments as well. All right, so now it is nicely squeezed out and we have a lovely terracotta shirt. Okay, here is the finished terracotta color. So this is still wet and it will dry. I'm gonna go outside and hang it to dry. So that was the finished terracotta piece. Remember I was telling you about the avocado color I did earlier. So this was the white shirt and this is the color that it turned out as. And I had another shirt that I didn't like the color of that was actually darker, it was a really I didn't like it. it was a disgusting brownie pea green it was quite gross um, so I thought adding the avocado color to it would um, turn out nicely and it did so it's a very nice um, earthy green so those are just a few of the samples of what you can make with the Procyon dye More fabric dyes and paints can be found at paintspot.ca.